today I'll be talking about the electric vehicle development process. Uh, following are the contents, what I would like to cover. First one is, uh, what is the difference between the conventional vehicles versus electric vehicles? And uh, what is the need for the future? Third one is the broad plot. And uh, I'm going to talk about, insist about more on the benchmarking as a part of session one. Now coming to the conventional vehicle, and uh, what is the difference between the conventional vehicle to the electric vehicle? So conventional vehicle and electric vehicle, uh, overall, when you look at the differences, most of the parts that are uh, available in the conventional car are similar to the electric vehicle. Then why it is so different? I would like to understand from you what and all uh, are the major components in a conventional vehicle. Like for example, I will explain about major components in a conventional vehicle and how it is different as compared to the electric vehicle. When you look at a conventional vehicle, what you mainly see is a body in white. Then you have a engine, you have powertrain, then you have a closures, closures meaning you have a, a doors, you have hood, you have rear hatch. These are typically called as closures. Other than that, you have wheels, you have suspension, you have uh, interiors, car interiors, you have car exteriors. So all these things will form a typical uh, major assembly in a conventional car. Uh, compared to the uh, electric car, uh, only difference is the powertrain. Say for example, uh, whatever we have as an engine, engine, powertrain, and uh, the fuel tank, those things will not be there in an electric vehicle. In an electric vehicle, whatever engine you have, it is replaced with electric motor. And whatever powertrain you have, powertrain is replaced with a constant speed or uh, automatic transmission. Whereas the fuel tank is replaced with a battery package. And we don't have a uh, exhaust system. That's a major difference between the conventional car to the electric car. Now the main challenge is why it is different in building a conventional car compared to an electric car. So when you take a specific electric car, electric car requires more space in terms of packaging the battery. Whereas in a conventional car, you don't have such kind of option. There is no necessity for going for a, such a kind of big uh, battery pack. Now coming to the power wise, yes, the power in both the scenarios is going to be the same. Power requirements or what is the outcome that is generated from the prime work is going to be the same. The main challenge here is uh, uh, when you want to do an uh, electric car, electric car requires a uh, lot of CPUs inside. CPUs in the sense, uh, most of this uh, motor, uh, battery management, then uh, typical controllers are electronic based. So that is not there in the conventional car. You might have one or two components like a uh, vehicle control unit or uh, body roll unit. But other than that, in electric car, you have more, more than uh, four CPUs available inside the car. So that makes it more intelligent car as compared to the conventional car. So these are the main differences which are required uh, at the first instance of time to understand why the development process of conventional car is different from the manufacturing process of an electric car. Electric car is more of uh, using a smart technology. We have to do a lot of small technology applications inside the electric vehicle. Okay. For that reason, mainly what we do is we uh, there is a, a different set of development process in electric car. Now coming to the second slide, this particular slide talks about what are the major differences between an electric vehicle and a petrol or a diesel vehicle or a conventional vehicle. So conventional vehicle uh, mainly runs on uh, fuel. So what happens is uh, once the fuel is over, you have to refill it. So that is a total running cost. And uh, every periodic time you have to go for a service. So which requires like change of engine oil or uh, change of some uh, gaskets or uh, grommets or something like that, which involves some amount of cost. There are some consumables which has to be used. And uh, what happens is uh, when we start using these vehicles, these vehicles tend to lead to some amount of pollution through tailpipe emissions. And when you look at typical uh, diesel car or petrol car you have a greater torque but if you want to have extraordinary torque you have to compromise on the fuel efficiency and you know nh stands for noise vibration harshness 
this is quite a complex subject in the conventional vehicle. What happens is most of the times because of a lot of uh, uh, moving components inside the conventional car, this leads to always a critical challenge for uh, maintaining a vehicle level, noise, vibration and harshness within the targets. You, you guys might be aware that you know when you buy a car, you look at a different variety of car available in the market. Say for example, you sit in a Maruti Alto, you sit in a Hyundai i20, you sit in a uh, Toyota Innova. There is a huge amount of difference in terms of quality of interiors inside the car. Okay, This is mainly because as you progress towards a better engineered product, NVH plays a critical role. So there are a lot of things that are covered under NVH. So typically for conventional vehicles, this is a huge topic. Well, coming to the next point, uh, I'm talking about vehicle dynamics. Vehicle dynamics is mainly dependent upon the suspension tuning and how the system behaves or responds back during the dynamic event. Say for example, when you are going on a road and suddenly you steer the vehicle off the road and try to pull it back onto the road. So this event typically is a ride and handling issue. So if the person sitting in the rear seat is comfortable, or he is uh, uh, not losing any sort of confidence, Typically that tells that, you know, the vehicle dynamics or the vehicle is properly engineered. So most of the things what happens is uh, uh, this requires a lot of uh, iterative process to arrive at a proper vehicle dynamic scenario. Every time when there is a fuel is shortage, you have to go to fuel station and fill it up. So these are all the common things that we are currently facing with conventional vehicles day to day activities what we do. Now the same thing when you reflect to electric vehicle. Electric vehicles are, they are cheap to run. In the sense, you need not put any fuel. There is no fuel tank. So what you need to do is, you need to simply uh, plug in to charge the battery. The moment it is charged, it can take you to a certain distance. Say for example, 100 kilometer or 150 kilometers without even spending a single amount of money. Now, since it doesn't burn any fuel, or it doesn't have any fuel, or it doesn't process any amount of fuel, there is no emission problem. Means it doesn't have a tailpipe emission, and you don't see any exhaust system in an electric vehicle. So that is one of the major uh, factor in an electric vehicle. Then third one is uh, you have a greater torque. Torque that comes from there, and the initial torque of the motor is very high, and you can get the acceleration of zero to 100 uh, kilometers kilometer per hour in uh, around five to six seconds if you do a proper calibration. Okay, since the torque is very high, uh, you have to be really careful while driving electric vehicle because it tends to drag you with that power. Now, these vehicles are quiet. There is no source of noise generated in the electric vehicle other than the motor. Typically, uh, since motor runs at a very high speed. So you might tend to see only a Y noise. Other than that, you don't see any sort of regular noise from the rotating components in the electric vehicle. So these are supposed to be a, uh, quiet cars when you compare to the conventional cars. Quiet car means you don't even realize that if a car comes and stands adjacent to your conventional car, uh, you don't feel like there is a car standing next to you or parked next to you because it is quiet. Then, um, Ride and handling in electric vehicles is really good because the battery pack, whatever we have, the energy storage system, it is distributed across the floor area. So which leads to a proper mass distribution and it doesn't allow any sort of imbalances in the system. So for example, uh, battery pack typical weight is uh, supposed to be around 150 kg to 200 kg. So that imagine that 200 kg is distributed on the floor area. So you have a very uniform distribution of mass and during any sort of uh, steep turns, uh, the system is going to behave in a very stable manner. Now the last but not the least, uh, no more petrol stations. So you, you don't need to go for any petrol station. You need to just charge the vehicle. So when you look at overall things, what we see is uh, based upon the uh, cost common uh, conditions what we observe in the conventional vehicles. Uh, in short, there is a lot of investment has to be done on that. A lot of maintenance cost is there. Then uh, you have to compromise on several things. And at the same time, when you look at an electric vehicle as a perspective, 
you see that uh, the running cost is very low quite user friendly it is well engineered but only issue is the cost so that is the worrying factor what is currently in the industry so the cost is mainly dependent upon the cost of the battery so there is a great amount of effort put by many oems in india to reduce the cost of the battery okay we'll go to the next slide wherein uh, what i'm talking here is uh, what is a car creation process car creation pro process uh, it is a quite complex process so for example when you look at ford general motors then uh, you look at uh, bmw or uh, look at maruti also so they have a legacy of data legacy of data meaning they have produced so many vehicles in past which has laid down a certain process say for example if they want to launch a vehicle there is a specific process what they need to follow this process is very critical reason being there are a lot of cross functional teams work together to achieve a product now for example if there is no proper sync happening between these teams and if people are not aware what needs to be delivered so it leads to a wrong product our product may not meet all the specified so this becomes a quite challenging aspect now imagine in a car you have around 10 to 15 subsystems which will be interacting with each other say for example you have uh, something like a battery pack so battery pack uh, if it is put in the vehicle so they have to interact with the body and white team so body and white team once they incorporate these kind of things they have to talk to the suspension team because the total weight of 200 kg has to be supported properly with the help of the suspension now the suspension team when they talk when they do the design they need to talk to vehicle dynamics team because this has to help in a proper balance of the vehicle now when the when they talk to vehicle dynamics team they talk to the styling team which provides the basic information of the hard points so it goes on so there is a very critical uh, critical uh, process to be followed on how to properly flow into the system in order to generate a pro particular product so uh, based upon my experience what i have seen is there are mainly two categories of vehicles one is a completely ground up vehicle what does that mean completely ground up vehicle means i am doing it from scratch say for example i decide to make a car so if i am trying to make a car from uh, scratch so that is called as a ground up vehicle now for example uh, there is a second scenario wherein you know i have taken a old uh, maruti car and i am trying to put all my electric equipment into the car so that you know i am converting that into electric variant so that is on the existing vehicle so the process to be followed for these two things are quite uh, different okay so in this uh, uh, three sessions what i have planned is uh, to explain you about uh, what are the broad steps in a ground up vehicle means what are the uh, typical process to be followed when we have to make a electric vehicle starting from scratch okay so the current presentation is is about this particular topic here i wanted to spend some time now this particular slide is categorized into initial study concept proto engineer design mass production trades and mass production so when you look at the first initial study initial study means uh, say for example uh, i want to build a vehicle okay so a vehicle is like you know i want to build a four wheeler a typical a hatchback and uh, it should be below 4 meter so what i do i give this particular concept to the styling team styling team is nothing but the transport engineering team so what transport engineering team does is they do some hand sketches with whatever definition i am giving then uh, i will define my problem in more clarity so for example i will say that my hatchback should look like a santro car or it should look like grand i10 or it should look like maruti celerio so these are my comparative uh, vehicles what, uh, what i am trying to do so this is nothing but benchmark okay so the moment i say i want my vehicle similar to something so you need to take those vehicles do a proper study and understand what exactly we are looking for. now for example imagine as a oem you make one more uh, hyundai i10 is anyone going to buy from you no 
then you have to have a unique factor from your side. Then if you want to have a unique factor, you need to understand what unique factor you, you want to give. To. Okay. That gives us a lot of study on the benchmarking and what exactly you can offer as a new product. Okay. Then comes the concept proto, engineering proto. These are like processes where we built a mule, uh, which looks like a design intent component. And then later we do some testing and then uh, we do a bug study. Okay. Uh, bug study means, uh, bug study typically is done for the interiors. Say for example, you have designed a seat, seat system inside your car. So you really don't know how it looks. So what you do is you create a realistic proto of the 3D interiors and we do something called uh, ergonomic study. Ergonomic study is done in the bug study. Bug study, you allow various uh, height persons and uh, various male and females sit in the vehicle and take their feedback in terms of the accessibility, comfort and the thigh support. So once everything is frozen, so that is one one part of it in the bug study. Again, you do an updated design and you involve uh, suppliers for the procurement and you build some testing mules. So testing mules are nothing but it is a representation of the design in uh, say around 90% of accuracy. So these testing mules will be built like for example, say around uh, 100, 150 for various experiments. And these mules will be released for uh, durability testing, reliability testing. Then they will be sent for uh, certification. All those things will be done. Then after that, we do something called uh, pre-production, wherein uh, once we get proper engineering design, we assemble it and see how the car looks like. Okay.